Good evening, everybody. Hope you are doing well tonight. Hello, Harbor of Hope Church family. I uh, hope you are all blessed and great and good and happy tonight. Uh, when you come on, just give me a thumbs up if you can hear, if everything seems to be doing all right. Uh, Wi-Fi is sort of acting up here today. There's a storm going on right now, but uh, I hope you all are, are doing well tonight. Uh, hope your families are doing well. All of you that are tuning in and uh, you don't go to Harbor of Hope, we welcome you tonight. And uh, for those of you that will be watching uh, on down the road here on Facebook, we, uh, we appreciate you joining us. God bless you. Uh, we're excited about uh, what we've been talking about. We've been talking about end time stuff. And uh, tonight, uh, believe it or not, we are going to have our last uh lesson on end time stuff that's just basically been our focus so uh uh i've really enjoyed this and i just want to say thank you for everybody that has been joining us i so appreciate it i uh, just really enjoyed this a lot i've really had a had a good time studying this and uh planning this so i hope you've enjoyed it as well but uh, let me see uh, about three thumbs up as you join on here. I just want to need to make sure that everything is <clears throat> here and if you're hearing me right. Uh, doing something a little different tonight. I'm here at the church. Uh, so just want to make sure you can hear me and the video's playing right. So let me see three thumbs up. Let me see. Ya. There's one. Praise the Lord. Two. Three. Amen. So uh, before we pray, I just had a, a, some praise reports. Uh, first of all, Wayne Kirk come out of surgery today. He had open heart surgery. He came out of surgery today. So we are so grateful. Everything went well. Uh, he'll be going to ICU for, for a while now, but pray for him. Continue to lift him up. But we are so so thankful. A prayer request went out there yesterday about him and the surgery and stuff and today and just wanted everybody to know that praise God he came out of surgery and uh, so every, everything's everything's going good. So we're thankful for that. Um, also a praise report this Sunday uh, we will have service at 9 o'clock, 11 o'clock here at Harbor of Hope. Later this week I'm going to send out a message, do a Facebook live uh, just uh, announcing some things about that service. You know, we uh, we can't be safe enough right now. You know, I know there's there's across the board, there are people that are taking all of this that we're going through different ways. Uh, so, you know, we still are thankful for our freedoms to be able to come together and worship the Lord. So uh, we're grateful for that. But we also know with, with our family, uh, we know that COVID-19 is real and it's everywhere. And you can, you know, you can't be safe enough. So back to the message I preached, sharks in the water. There's always sharks in the water. You know, we can't live our life in fear, but we sure can be cautious, right? And we can continue to live our lives and be cautious. So we will, uh, I'll, br I'll bring a message about that, just uh, an announcement about, about those services coming up uh, this Sunday. And we're doing some assessing uh of of everything you know we're in weird times crazy times unprecedented times therefore we might have to make some decisions that are unprecedented like what is this coming from we might have to do things like that right now because of the season that we're in so as you've always been you're loving harbor of hope you are awesome you've always been so supporting and 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 caring and 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 gracious and i just appreciate that so uh please just Let's continue to unite and not divide because I know we know where division comes from. It comes from the devil. So uh, we do not want to divide through this. Amen. We want to come together and unite in love. So uh, with that, let's let's pray. Don't forget the, the sponsor of the backpacks. Uh, you can find that information on our Facebook page, Harbor of Hope Facebook page. Uh, the drive through giveaway, you know, the backpack giveaway we're having in August. You can find all of that on the Facebook page. So if you are interested, please check that out. But uh, thank you for all of those of you that are already jumping on that and sponsoring bags and stuff. So we appreciate that. But let's pray and then let's, let's 
do a little review from last week, and then let's jump in the Word. Amen? Lord, we are excited tonight to be able to come to you and just be, be able to open up your Word freely, to study your Word, uh, just the lessons that we've been going through about the end times. Lord, it's, it's causing us to be alert and a and, and be ready and be prepared. And we, we're just looking. We're looking in your word and we're looking around us and we're seeing that, Lord, you are, you are coming soon. And we've got to be a people that are watching and, and ready. And, and we're doing what we're called to do as the church, to be your voice, the body of Christ, your voice, your hands, your feet, to carry the gospel and to spread love throughout this world. So, Lord, I just pray your blessings now upon each and every one that's going to be receiving this word tonight. May, may every heart be good ground, as we've been talking about on Sunday mornings. Lord, may the seed of your word just be implanted in good ground tonight. May, may many blessings come to all those that are viewing tonight that's going to receive this word from this word tonight. Lord, we love you. We praise you. We magnify you. Thank you again for answering our prayers. Thank you for being with Wayne. We're so grateful, Lord God. Thank you so much, Lord, for answered prayers. And uh, just, just, just bless us tonight. We love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So, a look in our rearview mirror. Last week, we talked about how we were, we are prepared. We have been created to be victorious, to be an overcomer. And uh, last week we read from Matthew chapter 16, and if you want to go ahead and turn to Luke chapter 17 for tonight, you can go ahead and go there. That's where we're going to be coming from. That's where our, our text will be. But last week we read that Jesus said that his church, which is you and I, he said the gates of hell would not be able to prevail against his church. So he pro prophesied that over us. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. We are more than overcomers through Christ Jesus who loved us. So uh, we, we were just talking about how we are created to be victorious. It's already been declared. We, we are going to be you know, overcomers. The gates of hell will not be able to prevail against us. And so we just ask the question, how has God equipped us for this victory? How has God equipped us for this, this, this victory and this life of victory? And we talked about how he has filled us with his Holy Spirit. And he said, he that is within us is greater than he that is within the world. Talked about how the Holy Spirit has brought us power and revelation, conviction. He reproves us. He leads and guides us. Uh, the second way he's equipped us for victory is he has given us this communication with him. Jesus on the main line. Come on, right? He's, he's always there. I, I don't sing, but, but he, he's call him up, call him up, tell him what you want. He's, he's always there. We can talk to God Almighty, the maker and creator of heaven and earth and the omniscient one, omnipotent one. We can talk to him. So yes, we have this, this line of communication with God Almighty, and He is all-powerful, all-knowing. So yeah, we've got victory. He says in Hebrews 4, 16, let us come boldly into the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace and to help in time of need. So wow, yeah, we're prepared, equipped for victory. We can talk to God, amen. Uh, number three, we're clothed in the armor of God. Uh, Ephesians chapter 6, we learned about that armor. And then finally, number four was just that the presence of God's angels are around us, according to Psalms 91, 11, for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Hallelujah. So uh, we have been prepared and equipped for victory, my friends. So tonight, we're going to look in Luke chapter 17, and uh, I'm going to be reading from the New Living Translation. And... Uh, Tonight, we're just going to look at how Jesus, he, he made a comparison with the days of Noah and the days of Lot. So we're wrapping this end times message up. If you want to look at Matthew 24, this is how he concludes Matthew chapter 24 by, by referring to the days of Noah to say, hey, this is, this is what my, my, my coming is going to be like as in the days of Noah. So we're going to read that from, from Luke's account in Luke chapter 17 tonight. And like I say, I'm reading from the New Living Translation. We're going to be starting to read in, in verse 26. And it says, when the Son of Man returns, it will be like it was in Noah's day. Ding, 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 ding. There is our, our alert. So 
as it was in Noah's day, and what are we studying? Our day, end times. We believe we're in the end times. So he says, as it was in Noah's day, it's going to be the same when I return. That's what Jesus said. So now we're making a comparison with Noah's day and our day. And he goes on, he says, in those days, the people enjoyed banquets and parties and weddings right up to the time Noah entered his boat, and the flood came and destroyed them all. And the world will be as it was in the days of Lot. Another comparison. He says, now the world's going to be like it was in Noah's day when I return. The world's going to be like it was in Lot's day when I return. How was it in Lot's day? It said people went about their daily business, eating and drinking, buying and selling, farming and building. Until the morning Lot left Sodom, then fire and burning sulfur rained down from heaven and destroyed them all. Yes, it will be business as usual right up to the day when the Son of Man is revealed. So here is now the comparison that we're going we're gonna to make tonight with the days of Noah and the days of Lot. And I, I just simply want to wanna look at it from, from three points tonight. And, and we're going to make a comparison with Noah's day and Lot's day with our day. And the three points I want to talk about tonight is that in, in Noah's day and in Lot's day, sin was rampant, judgment was looming, and grace was present, okay? Those three points, when we're looking at Noah's day and Lot's day, and we're making a comparison, okay, Jesus said that, that as it was in the days of Noah, as it was in the days of Lot, so shall it be in the days when he returns. What will the world be like? Well, he said it would be like the, the world was in the days of Noah and Lot. I just want us to look just for a moment into these, these areas. First of all, sin was rampant. Well, what was it like in Noah's day? We read in Genesis chapter 6, verse 5, it says, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. The New Living Translation says, The Lord observed the extent of human wickedness on the earth, and he saw that everything they thought or imagined was consistently and totally evil. Wow. You know, we see a lot of evil in our world today, but here for God to say that every imagination of the heart of man in Noah's day was evil continually. Now that's Noah's day. Now Lot's day. Genesis 19, 1 through 5. This was... This was this was what happened, okay, in Lot's day here in Sodom and Gomorrah. There's these two cities, they were, both, they were both full of iniquity. They were full of, of immorality. And this is, this is, you might could say, the straw that broke the camel's back. We get to be, we were, we're, it's revealed to us just how bad things have gotten. It says in Genesis 19, 1 through 5, it says in the New Living Translation, it says, that evening, the two angels came to the entrance of the city of Sodom. You see, God's grace was, was being evident here. God was sending angels to take Lot and his family out of these cities before the judgment came. And, and this is how, this is what transpired when the angels came to Sodom. Lot was sitting there, and when he saw them, he stood up to meet them. Then he welcomed them and bowed his face to the ground. My lords, he said, come to my home and wash your feet and be my guests for the night. You may then get up early in the morning and be on your way again. Oh no, they replied, we'll just spend the night out here in the city square. But Lot insisted, so at last they went home with him. Lot prepared a feast for them, complete with fresh bread made without yeast, and they ate. But before they retired for the night, all the men of Sodom, young and old, came from all over the city and surrounded the house. They shouted to Lot, Where are the men who came to spend the night with you? 
Bring them out to us so that we can have sex with them. The King James Version says that we may know them, and that is, of course, referring to a sexual relation. Sodom is where we get the word sodomy. The men of the city were wanting to gang rape the two angels. This, my friends, is how wicked the days were there in Lot's day, the city of Sodom, okay? This is how bad that it, it had gotten. And we now look around us in our world today, okay? And we're making a comparison because Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah and as in the days of Lot, so shall it be in the, as the days of the coming of the Son of Man. We're going to get into really in that context of what he was saying there about being caught off guard, unaware of his return. But, but when we just look at what was going, what was life like, what were the people like in Noah's day and Lot's day, we get a glimpse of the wickedness and the unrighteousness that was going on, okay? And then let's think about our world. And remember, Jesus said that iniquity would abound and the love of many would wax cold. We've talked about this in this study as we look around us in our world today and we think about, you know, what all we see in our headlines today. My friends, we see a world around us where it... Iniquity has abounded. We see in our world around us where love has waxed cold. What, what is our world in need of more than anything right now? Love. Because you read 1 Corinthians 13. Hey, he said love bears it all. Love, love holds up under all things. Love will unite. Love is what our world needs. Who's to be reflecting that love? We are the church, the victorious ones. Amen. But when we look around us, we see evil imaginations. We see wickedness spilling out, spewing out from the hearts of men and women. May I say today that we see wickedness in, in, in the killing of, of babies through abortion. I'm talking these wicked imaginations of allowing babies to even be born and place them on a table. Sensitive subjects, we know, and there's a divide in our world over this subject. But the Bible says that God hates the hands that shed innocent blood. You can't get more in, no, any more innocent than a baby. I've told you my testimony. The doctors wanted to allow that process of the umbilical cord choking me out because of the scenario that I was going to enter into, okay? I could have easily not been here if it was up to that doctor. Thank God my grandpa chased him on down the hall and said, you get that little baby out, whatever you got to do. I'm just saying, I didn't have a voice in the matter, okay? I could not be here today. God has a plan for those little babies. and He's displeased with things like abortion. We see our, our world and how we've embraced things that the Bible says is wrong, like homosexuality. Another sensitive subject. Why are you just pointing this out? Why don't you, you're judging. Why don't you talk about all the other sins? I'm talking about this one because our world is saying something that the Bible says is wrong. Our world is calling it right. I have to proclaim truth. I have to stand on the truth. We love, we love everybody, amen? I'm not here to judge. I'm just saying, this is what brought judgment down upon the cities of, of Sodom and Gomorrah. There was, there was a gang rape getting ready to take place, and it was, it was this, this seems horrible, y'all. I'm just saying, we're looking around us, and he said, as it was in the days of Noah and Lot, so shall it be in the, in the generation, in the days before he returns. I'm just saying, We've got, a, we've got a, a, a scene setting up around us of sin that is rampant around us today. Another sign that he is going to come soon. The next thing is this judgment was looming. We don't like to talk about the judgment of God. Why? Because we are under grace right now. 
And that's not a popular subject, and a lot of preachers don't want to talk about judgment. They don't want to talk about hell anymore. But hey, I thank God that he is so real with us, he lets us know straight up what's up. He tells us straight up. He tells us the truth. He gives us scenes like what we read about there in Genesis 19. He doesn't hold it back. He lets us know how wicked things can get when we go away from God. And he lets us know the end. And he lets us know that, hey, this is what's going to happen if you continue on this path of sin. But this is how much God loves the world. He sent his only begotten son to pay our sin debt, to suffer judgment for us on the cross. Amen. That's the love of God, my friends. That is the love of God. So you can talk about, oh God, how can he create hell? How can he do this? He has told us the truth and then he stepped even further to show us his love and his true character and nature. God is love. How can you say that? He didn't have to do what he's done for us humans, but he did it because he loves us and he wants to spend eternity with us. But God is holy and sin cannot come into his presence he is holy and he is just. And he will judge not only the murderers, not only the, the, the horrible crimes that we hear about in our news today, the people that have committed these horrible acts of wickedness, but he is so holy and so just that he will bring judgment upon all liars, upon all adulterers, upon all blasphemers, upon all thieves. I mean, that's how holy and just he is. We can't just say, oh yeah, God judge them and leave out all the other sin. He is so just. He, he, every person will stand before him and give account one day. That's why we have to have a relationship with Jesus because it's his righteousness that we have been given that we can stand before God clean, forgiven, holy in God's eyes through his son. The blood of Jesus has cleansed us. We have now been given Jesus, his righteousness. We are righteous through Christ. But judgment was looming. You have the flood and you have, you have the flood and, and you have all this wickedness. And for some 120 years, Noah built this ark warning people of, of a judgment that was coming. And you, you know, it's, it's, you make this comparison. There was, there, they had never seen this rain before. They had never seen anything like what Noah was talking about. And you know, a lot of times it's like that with us as, as we talk to people about judgment, as we talk to people about heaven and hell, it's hard for people to even compare Com comprehend what we are trying to tell them of and warn them of. But don't you know, when those when that door, that ark closed and the, the rain started coming down out of the heavens, don't you know, then it really set in, wow, what have we done? You had the flood coming as judgment there in Genesis. Then you had the fire that was going to be come, coming to the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. All to do what? To bring an end to the sin, to judge the sin. And now let's look at our day, okay? Unpopular subject of judgment, but it's coming. It is coming. Judgment is coming to this earth from God. Listen, Jesus has paid your sin debt in full. He has taken your judgment for you, paid your sin debt. He died the death that you deserve to die on the cross. But if you choose not to accept his payment for your sin, then God will allow you to pay it yourself. And that is the judgment that, that human beings are choosing. I, I don't want Jesus. I they're choosing to, to pay their sin debt themselves. Now listen to what the word says. We're talking about sin. We're talking about being judged, the judgment day of God that's coming upon our world, okay? It says in Acts 17, 30 through 31, and the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. 
because he hath appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men, and that he hath raised him from the dead. What do you need to get to heaven? Happiness? Money? Bunch of friends? Popularity? Good job? No, you need righteousness. You need righteousness. How do I get that? Through a relationship with Jesus Christ. God has appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness. Don't listen to any other means of getting to heaven. It's righteousness that you will be judged by, and you have none. You have none. Your righteousness, your good works, your religion, your religious works mean nothing to God. The only thing you can bank on is your relationship with Jesus and the righteousness that he gives to you. Period. That's why a relationship with Jesus is so critical, so crucial. Do you know him? Does he know you? Amen? Amen. 2 Peter 3, 7, But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. So a judgment day is coming. Now listen to Revelation 6. Because remember what I had just said. Revelation 6, verse 12 through 17. I said this, okay? You can choose to pay your sin debt if you want to. Or you can trust in Jesus and, and accept the payment that he made for your sin. But if you want to, you can pay it yourself, okay? Listen. Listen to what's coming on the earth. Revelation 6, 12 through 17. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sack, sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man, hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains, and said unto the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? It's appointed a day of wrath. God's judgment is going to be poured out on sin. Judgment is, is looming still here today in our world. He said, as it was in the days of Noah and Lot, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. Sin was rampant, and judgment is looming for us as well. And you know the sad thing about this? And we're going to read this in, in Revelation where God pours out his judgment. And you know what people still did not do? They still didn't repent. I want us to go to Revelation chapter 16, I believe. As you turn there, I'm turning there with you because I want to make sure that this is... And tell me to go your way over Yeah, yes. All right, listen to this. So here, here's, here's the seven vials or bowls of God's wrath that are going to be poured out, prophesied in Revelations chapter 16. They're going to be poured out upon this earth. Okay? So listen. Just listen to this. Listen to what's going to happen. Judgment is looming. Like I say, we're not appointed under wrath because we have a relationship with Jesus. But if you choose to pay your own sin debt, God will allow it. You have free will, okay? But listen, then I heard a mighty, I'm reading from New Living Translation, then I heard a mighty voice from the temple say to the seven angels, go your ways and pour out on the earth the seven bowls containing God's wrath. So the first angel left the temple and poured out his wrath on the earth and horrible malignant sores broke out on everyone who had the mark of the beast and who worshipped his statue. We've talked about that before. It says, Then the second angel poured out his bowl on the sea, and it became like the blood of a corpse, and everything in the sea died. 
Then the third angel poured out his bowl on the rivers and springs, and they became blood. And I heard the angel who had authority over all water saying, You are just, O Holy One, who is and who always was, because you have sent these judgments. God is just in his judgments, y'all. He is just. He says, since they shed the blood of your holy people and your prophets, you have given them blood to drink. It is their just reward. And I heard a voice from the altar saying, yes, O Lord God, the Almighty, your judgments are true and just. Then the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun, causing it to scorch everyone with its fire. Everyone was burned by this blast of heat, and they cursed the name of God. Listen, they cursed the name of God who had control over all these plagues. They did not repent of their sins and turn to God and give him glory. Like I say, he's given us free will. You can accept the payment for your sins through the death of Jesus on the cross or you can choose to pay them yourself. And these are the folks that are remaining on this earth. We're not appointed under wrath. Remember, hey, he's, he's paid our, our sin debt. So we won't be enduring, having to endure this. We, hey, we're with him. Or if we're here, we're protected. I'm just saying, this, these people, they still won't give God glory. They still won't repent. And you know what? God knows that. Isn't that, you know, I'm just going to pause right there. That's the thing. That's the thing that people, boy, we can argue over and divide over predestination and, and all this election and all this stuff. But isn't it something to know that God knows every heart and he knows every person that will still never, never repent and give him glory. You know, that's the line in the sand, isn't it? One day, that last seat around the marriage supper of the Lamb is going to be filled, and God will know that the rest of the people, He knows their heart. He knows that they will never, no matter what, they will never, ever repent. They will, they will curse Him until their very last breath. And here we see this. We see this continuing to curse God and not repent. Verse 10 then the fifth angel poured out his bowl on the throne uh, of the beast and his kingdom was plunged into darkness. His subjects ground their teeth in anguish and they cursed the God of heaven for their pains and sores, but they did not repent of their evil deeds and turn to God. Then the sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great Euphrates River and it dried up so that the kings from the east could march their armies towards the west without hindrance. And I saw three evil spirits that looked like frogs leap from the mouths of the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. They are demonic spirits who work miracles and go out to all the rulers of the world to gather them for the battle against the Lord on the great day of God's uh, God Almighty. Look, I will come as unexpectedly as a thief. Blessed are all who are watching for me, who keep their clothing ready so they will not have to walk around naked and ashamed. Wow. There's one more angel that sounds or pours out the vials, but I just wanted to, to just show you that point, that there are, there are people who are going to choose to pay their own sin debt. They will curse God until their very last breath is in their lungs. Isn't that sad, my friends? To see what God has done to send his son to die on the cross so that we could have our sins forgiven and we could spend eternity with him, live forever in heaven. And yet there are people that will, that will go to their grave cursing God. That breaks my heart. And you know, I know it breaks God's heart. I'm just saying judgment was looming in the days of Noah, the days of Lot. And my friends, today, judgment is looming. All right? Oh, but here's the good news. Right? Yeah, we Don't hesitate to preach on judgment and hell because you've got grace, baby. Woo! Amazing grace! Where sin abounded, then grace did much more abound, right? Judgment was looming, but grace was present. Hallelujah. Woo! 
You had the ark. You had the ark of safety. You had that ark there that God, that was God's amazing grace there in the very beginning in Genesis. The ark represented the grace of God, the mercy of God. You had the angels that God sent to Lot and his family to lead them out of the cities. That was God's grace in action. His grace, his mercy was there in the days of Lot. And today, my friends, yes, there is a day appointed to where God is going to bring an end to sin. But hallelujah, grace is present today, my friends. Amazing grace it is. Hallelujah. So we have, we have this grace today that is here, that is, that is just waiting for people to repent to surrender, to submit to that God's love is here. I think about there's a passage of scripture there that, that in Genesis where, where where there was seven, yet seven more days that the ark, the door of the ark was open. I think about that. And yet seven more days God held that door, that ark open, as though this was one, one more last call of grace, one more chance. I'm giving you seven more days. And I just wonder, when will that period be for us here on this earth? Knowing that, that hey, the signs are, are happening around us, knowing that God is coming Right, Knowing this thing's going to wrap up, knowing sin is rampant, judgment is looming, there's going to be a period of time on this earth where it's going to be a, a period of grace that's going to be here like, like yet seven more days. God's waiting, waiting for people to repent, to trust the gospel, to hear the gospel. Is that, is that time now? Is it to, that time to come? All I know is we're the church and we better make sure that we're still proclaiming the good news of the gospel. Because look, Jesus is the ark today. You, he said, abide in me and I in you. When you're in Jesus, you're in the ark. There's grace. He has sent his Holy Spirit, surrounded us with angels. We learned last week the Holy Spirit gives us revelation. He'll give us guidance and direction. It's like those angels, that's God's grace. He didn't have to send the Holy Spirit to fill us, but he has. Why? Because of his grace and mercy and love. And what's the Holy Spirit do? Hey, we've got, we've got all kinds of evils and dangers and snares and traps in this world because of the sin. But the Holy Spirit, just like the angels in Lot's day, the Holy Spirit leads us and guides us away from harm's way. And he protects us by giving us insight. He, I mean, he's on the inside of us. That is God's grace at work in our lives. So it's so important that you, you remain in Christ. And, and allow the Holy Spirit to do His work in your life. Like I say, I, I commune with the Holy Spirit daily. I need Him. If He's here, I need to talk to Him. I need His help. Amen. So one of my number one prayers I've told you. Help me, Holy Spirit. Help me, Holy Spirit. Now in closing, as we wrap, wrap this thing up, checking out the time here. There's a couple more points here that I just want to bring out uh, as we close this thing. We're looking at Noah's day, Lot's day, comparing it to our day. We see that, that, that sin was rampant. It's rampant today in our world. We see that judgment was looming. It's looming here for us today, but grace is present. Grace was present there. Grace is present today. Take advantage of that grace, that unmerited grace, that, 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 that grace that is sufficient for all of our needs. Jump in it. Swim in it. I mean, abide in that grace, my friends, because God, God, it's present. God's given it to us. There's a couple of things I want to bring out from those scriptures there in Luke chapter 17 that, that, that are very uh, eye-opening that we need to close this, this, this lesson down with. Luke 17, verse 30, says, Yes, it will be business as usual right up to the day when the Son of Man is revealed. So really, the main emphasis that Jesus was trying to make when he was making a comparison with Noah and Lot's day to our day when he returns is that people will be caught off guard. 
People will be doing business as usual. People will be living their lives for themselves, distracted by life on this earth, business as usual until the day that the Son of Man comes. It was business as usual. No, oh, that's that crazy preacher. He has lost his mind. Look at that structure he has built. He said there's judgment coming. He said rain's coming. That, guy, that guy's crazy. Business as usual. Yeah, just, just don't worry about him. We, we got our life to live. Sodom, Gomorrah, business as usual as the angels are leading Lot and his family out. And I, you know, we're in this pandemic it has shaken the world. It's not business as usual right now. Maybe that's what God wants us to see and learn through this. It's not business as usual. It's a time like we've never seen before in our lives. Now, are we to just go, go back and long to go back to business as usual? Maybe business as usual wasn't healthy for us. Can we just be real? Maybe business as usual was actually toxic to us. Maybe the comfort zones of church and the comfort zones of our lives before the pandemic and the idols and the things that we had that are not here right now Maybe this shaking, we can learn some valuable lessons from it. And, in the, and then he goes on to say in verse 31, On that day a person out on the deck of a roof must not go down into a house to pack. A person out in the field must not return home. Listen to what he says. Remember what happened to Lot's wife. What happened to Lot's wife? God told them, the angels told them, hey, do not look back. We're heading out of these cities. God's going to judge these cities. Don't look back. You have nothing here, nothing there left, left for you. Hey, this is a wicked sin, all infested places. Just go. Let's get you out of here. And what happened to Lot's wife? She looked back. The Bible says she became a pillar of salt. And he says right after that, if you cling to your life, you will lose it, and if you let your life go, you will save it. Are we looking back today at, at life before the pandemic saying, man, I wish I was back there. Do you? Okay. We've been shaking right now. We're seeing that, that things that we hold dear to us in this life can come crumbling, crashing down just like that, within a week, within a day. Maybe some of these things that, that took so much of our time, maybe, maybe, maybe they wasn't so healthy for us. Maybe they wasn't so good for us. Maybe the comfort zone of a nice padded pew in a church, man. A, oh, wow, this is, this is great. This is what I want. This is what, what, what church is all about. Maybe that wasn't what it was all about. Maybe we're supposed to be out more. Maybe we're supposed to be doing more outside of the walls of a church and the comfort zones of a church. Remember Lot's wife. He says, if you, if you seek to hang on to your life here on this earth, you're going to lose it. And what, what did she do? She was looking back at her life. God had more for her. He was rescuing her, her family. But she looked back at her life in Sodom as though she was wanting something that she was leaving there. I'm just saying, there's nothing in this world for us, y'all. This is just such a, a lesson we need to learn, you know, as a disciple of Jesus Christ. You know, don't try to hang on to this life. He said, you let go of this life, that's when you truly find life. And when we let go of the idols and, and when we let go of the materialism and all the things that we can get so caught up in and distracted by here on this earth, when we let go of those things and totally, fully surrender to God and His will, He said that's when you really, truly find life on this earth. But if you seek to hang on to your life on this earth, oh, I've got to have this. This is where life is all about and making money and doing this and going there and seeking this pleasure, seeking that pleasure. He says, you're going to lose your life because that's not what it's about. But if you let go of this life, and that's when you find life, when you give your life to the Lord. 
He said, remember Lot's wife. There's nothing in that old, this old world of sin, this temporal, this temporal world. He said, there's nothing here for us. We're focused on eternal things, eternity. He goes on, he says, that night two people will be asleep in one bed, one will be taken, the other left. Two women will be grinding flour together at the meal, one will be taken, the other left. The disciples asked him, where will this happen, Lord? The, dis the disciples asked, and Jesus replied, just as the gathering of vultures shows there is a carcass nearby, so these signs indicate that the end is near. The King James, it says, where the eagles are gathered, that's where the body lays. And, and you know, we country folks, we, we, we can understand this. And I, I, I love this, this image that, that Jesus gives. All these things that he's talking about that's going to be happening, business as usual. People's going to be looking to seek, find life here on this earth with temporal things. The disciples said, where, where will this be happening? It's going to be happening in the generation right before the coming of the Son of Man. And, and look, look at the analogy he has. Look at this sign. He says, see, we country folk know, know about this. If you just see one buzzard flying out in the sky, that don't mean nothing. That, that, they ain't found nothing. They ain't found no dead carcass out there anywhere if it's just one buzzard. He's looking. He's smelling. He's looking for a carcass. But when you see a bunch of buzzards flying overhead, you know, right? You know there's a, something dead down there. There's a dead carcass down there. What does that mean? He said, when will these things happen? Where will they be happening? He says, when you see one sign of the time taking place, you know, you know, okay, yeah, I've still got a little bit more time. Yeah, you know, I, I know, you know, yeah, that Jesus is coming, but it ain't coming, he ain't coming soon. He says, but when you see all the signs of the times coming hot and heavy, you know the end is near. That's when these things are going to be taking place. We're seeing the signs of the times being fulfilled right now, my friends, hot and heavy, hot and heavy. They're coming in. It's like all the buzzards have gathered around. That's where the carcass is. Hey, we're seeing signs of the times. We know Jesus is coming soon. Don't look back, my friends. Don't look to this world for life. Don't go back to business as usual. What is the main thing we need to learn from these lessons? Jesus said, watch and be ready. Watch and be ready. Are you watching? Are you seeing all of these signs? I mean, I'm seeing videos, and you know how Facebook videos are. You don't know what's true, what ain't. All this stuff with the cashless companies going cashless, a coin shortage. I mean, we've talked about this. The Antichrist is going to set up a cashless society, and you've got to have his mark before you can buy and sell. I'm seeing a video where these people in this company were receiving a chip in their hand. I'm just saying, we're seeing signs of the time are coming hot and heavy right now. Are you ready? Are you ready? Don't look back, y'all. Don't look back. Jesus is coming soon. We've got work to do. Let's be his voice. Let's be his hands and feet. Let's tell some people that Jesus loves them. Amen. Let's spread the gospel. Let's spread the gospel. Amen. Hallelujah. So that concludes our series of messages and lessons on end time stuff. And again, I want to say thank you so much for joining on these, on these studies. Uh, share this. If you think it's good for somebody, share it. Let somebody uh, know that we're talking about important stuff. Amen. This stuff's pertinent. This, 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 this pretty good stuff here. We, we need to be ready for the Lord to come. Amen. But uh, love you all so much. I want to just pray as we close and uh, just thank God for his word again tonight. He's so gracious in giving us a word to, to get us ready, isn't he? Lord Jesus, we are grateful tonight for, for grace. Lord, we are living and breathing and walking in grace. And we know, we see the signs, Lord. We see it. You have already told us. You said, behold, I have told you before so that we would be ready. And Lord, we are a people that have been studying your word, looking into it, 
Lord, dividing it and, and just seeing, Lord God, how you have made comparisons. And we're looking at our world today. And Lord God, we're, we're shaking our heads. We're agreeing, Lord God. The vultures have gathered. The signs are all around us. We know you are coming soon. But Lord God, that shows us that we cannot get distracted. We cannot go back to business as usual. We cannot look back. We cannot look to this world for our lives we have to stay focused on our mission. And our mission is to go out into this world and be your hands and feet, your voice, and to preach the gospel to every creature and love. Our world needs love. Our world needs love. So God, I pray tonight that you would anoint each and every ear that has heard this, this word tonight. And may faith arise. You said faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord. May faith arise tonight in every heart. Faith in your word of seeing these signs. And may, may eyes be open to how, 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 how real this, this is. Your word is telling us our headlines and our, our news, Lord. I mean, it, it's just so close. But God, may there be an urgency rise up in every heart that there's work to be done. There's souls that need to be reached, Lord God, with the gospel. We all have a part in this. We all have a part in spreading the gospel of love, Lord Jesus. So, Lord, anoint this body of believers tonight to go forth in love and to spread the good news of the gospel. Our world needs some good news. Bless them with your, your, your presence of your Holy Spirit. Bless them with joy and peace. During this time that we're living in, God, we need peace. Bless them with joy and peace right now, Lord. And we love you. Thank you again for grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. God bless you all. Like I say, we will uh, have a special announcement just talking about, you know, some uh, things for service Sunday, but service Sunday morning, 9 o'clock, 11 o'clock, and we're assessing some things, and uh, we're just going to make some decisions based on, you know, the times we're living in, but we're focused on continuing to be the church, a church of hope, amen? We're team hope. We're going to spread the gospel and love people, but uh, God bless you all. Hope y'all have a wonderful evening, and be safe.